Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Paul, AKA Powerhouse 21, and welcome to part two of how to sell your computer on Craigslist. Let's roll the intro. So what you're going to see are my steps on how I price my computers for Craigslist. And I'm gonna start with online retailers, I'm gonna start with eBay, and the fact is that those are the places that you're going to find the current average price of the parts you have. Just make sure you know what you have first, and this will be nice and easy. I usually start with Google. I just try to get the best idea of what these particular parts are going for now that they are just a bit older. And I will go ahead and try Amazon and Newegg. New, they're still going for $389. And that just means they have them in stock, obviously. It's an older processor, so prices are going to start to go up. And that's just because it's becoming a rarity and it's also something that it's going to be harder to find, so the supply and demand is going to raise those costs. And here on Amazon, we do see that they are going for used and new, starting at 228 and free shipping. When I go to eBay and type in i7-3770K, I'm not gonna want to look for what they're going for. I want to know what they sold for. So down at the bottom on the left hand side, you're going to see a couple options and you only need to click the sold items checkbox because it'll actually check both boxes at the same time. That'll make sure that it has the completed items and sold items both checked and now we can look through the pricing. What we're seeing here is a bunch of different prices and I've gone ahead and taken all of these plus the shipping to make sure that I have a good average. And then on the spreadsheet, I go ahead and put down the prices that I just found, as well as the average on eBay or Craigslist if I can find it there. So next we're looking at the motherboard and this I do have something to address. As these particular parts age, there are certain parts within machines that will just be astronomically priced. You're looking at $400, $500 on average motherboards. You're looking at different uh, demands that because of the age of these pieces, not that it's bad that they're older, but because if something happens to a board that you need a direct replacement for, you're going to pay a premium. And then all of a sudden we go over to Amazon and we're seeing it up to a thousand. On average on eBay, you're looking at an average of 139, 170 plus shipping, 155 plus shipping. And one of those you see comes from China, but I will take the average of these and put them on the spreadsheet. In this particular case, we're looking at $190 on average for eBay and the unfortunate $500 average that I found for the board brand new. Next up is the RAM. I do have Corsair Dominator Platinum at 1866, and that's 32 gigs. What I always make sure to do when I'm looking at RAM pricing, and, as, and actually this goes for any other component within the system, you want to make sure that you're matching all of your parts correctly. So in this case, I want to make sure that I'm selecting 32 gig DDR3-1866. And you will see differences between the 1866 and the 2400 and the 2133. There are going to be differences in price, so you definitely want to make sure that you're matching the specs exactly. In this case, the unfortunate part about the aging DDR3 is that you're still going to get those really high numbers for some reason. So what we were unfortunately seeing from a major online retailer was $660, which if somebody was in a pinch and they needed all brand new RAM, I 
don't really know why they would spend $660 on that, but going over to eBay, we are seeing an average of $220. That's definitely something that we want to make a note of. When you're looking at your storage, you definitely want to be as exact as possible. In this particular case, this motherboard has a built-in mSATA slot. And the difference of that is it's not M.2, it's not PCIe, it is mSATA. So I want to make sure that I research exactly what I have. In this case, it's the Samsung 500 gigabyte 850 EVO, and it is a solid state drive, but they are going to average right around $94 on eBay. And I did find them for around $147 on Amazon, and that's actually with Prime. For the graphics card, it is a GTX 780 Ti. I went ahead and found an average of $173 on eBay, and to buy it on Amazon, it is still $284. When looking for a DVD Blu-ray player, on average, this particular LG Blu-ray reader with DVD R R W write capabilities averages on eBay right around $29. I could get it from Micro Center for about $70, and that could be basically any brand. The PCIe Wireless AC card is an ASUS PCE AC 55BT. What I found is brand new. These go for around $59 and used on eBay. It was an average of right around 32. The AX750 Corsair power supply, it goes for an average of $50 on eBay and it goes for right around 200 on average on a major retailer. One of the things I like most about this particular PC is the case. I found it for $55 $33 for the one bid that I saw on eBay, and then $22 shipping. That actually is a pretty good price for a Lian Lee aluminum case. I did, however, find it on other sites that sell used cases. They were going for about $300, but that is actually an average of what I found from other retailers around the internet. I did want to make sure to include the Corsair SP120 static pressure fans, and that's just because they are a good addition to this case. What I found for a two-pack on eBay was right around $22, and some of them, if not most of them, were brand new. What I did find on Amazon is right around $28 for the two-pack, and I usually just get those. Sometimes it's cheaper, sometimes it's not, so definitely shop around if you are looking for fans. So there you go. Those are the steps that I take to properly price a computer that I'm getting ready to sell on Craigslist. But I also want to make sure that people that are going to be buying this are getting a fair price as well. On an older computer, it's really hard to try to make a profit because the age of the computer will actually hinder you from doing that. If it was brand new, you might be able to make something, but unfortunately, when it comes to things on Craigslist, as I've showed you in the how to buy, people will sell things for an astronomical price. But you will also find people that are selling pretty nice gear for a pretty nice price. So for an eBay average of $1,100, I'm really not sure what I would price this as. I think what I want to do is have people out there comment, what would a system like this be worth to you? And you know, it could be a lowball answer. The fact is that if that's all that's worth to you, that's fine. But just expect the person that's going to be selling it to say no. So thank you so much for joining me today in part two of how to sell your computer on Craigslist. Stay tuned for part three, where we're gonna go ahead and prep this thing for sale. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that we blow it out with air and we prep the hard drive and things like that. Now, I do have to warn you that I may not actually be doing these things to this system because it is actually set up exactly how I like it but I will go ahead and show you the programs or where to get those programs to make sure that you can go through and prep something for sale so you know that your information, whatever had been on there, is now completely erased and to make sure that the person getting it doesn't get any of your files. 
So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, hit the thumbs up if you did like this content, and I'm gonna go ahead and keep making it because I'm having a lot of fun trying to share the little bits of knowledge that I can to people that may not know exactly what to do when they're trying to buy or sell. So I hope you're getting closer to be able to sell your computer the right way. Thank you so much for watching.